subject, I think some of you know, called The Ultimate Betrayal, is their happy meet. And generally, I, I uh, talk about kind of, you know, what that means uh, in this presentation and others that I do often. Uh, but we decided to kind of change it up a little. I let Justin take that. I think he did a wonderful job. Actually. <laughs> talk to you about today is the, a couple of things I'm going to um, touch on a few subjects. One, the environmental factor in this and labels like sustainable and organic and what that means environmentally. Uh, I think it's an important part of this, uh, as well as the language and labeling, both the industry's la labeling and, and marketing and our language as activists uh, around this issue. So I'm going to try to cover all of that in my time. So, uh, so this, this is my book, The Ultimate Betrayal, is their happy meat. Um, <laughs> it's one of the only books that comes out it. There's two or three others. Um, and so starting with the environmental impact, um, and, and, you know, and, I, and I know that a lot of us feel this way, but I feel this very strongly that the environmental aspect and environmentalism is an animal rights issue. Um, you know, these animals have to live in the environment. They're more affected by it than we are. Uh, they're living in the air and the water directly, um, so it's very, very important. And just having you know, the larger picture of animal agriculture, just having billions of animals alive, uh, <laughs> breeding, and, and, yeah, this is it, folks, this is how it works in the field. Um, so, uh, the, the carbon footprint of animal agriculture, 51%, um, this is one of the studies that has been done by two prominent World Bank environmental advisors that uh, determine that 51% of our greenhouse gases come from animal agriculture. Uh, so it's absolutely significant. Of course, there's um, resource depletion, water waste, water pollution, air pollution, all of that. So this information is coming out now. People are realizing that animal agriculture has a heavy impact. So they're looking now to labels like sustainable and organic and local. Um, it's not her fault. <laughs> um, so local, I'm gonna start with local. And the more I uh, look into this, this label, the more irked I get because it means so little, um, both ethically and environmentally. Uh, with a food's carbon footprint, the transportation aspect or how local the food is, is only 11% of the equation. But production, how heavy and intensive the production is, is 83% of the equation, and animal products are intensely heavy on production. So an, the, the, the factor of them being an animal product is so much more impactful than it just being local to the area. Um, this is a, a photo that I snapped actually recently at Whole Foods, so this, this label is just everywhere. It's, um, you see it all the time. Uh, in Oakland, I live up in the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, Oakland in the East Bay, they have a food policy council, which is a government body of the local city government, and they did a, a food assessment, of, uh, it was like the Oakland Food Systems Assessment, and they calculated how much usable land in Oakland it would take to feed just 30% of the city with local foods, right? And they calculated that it would take 9,000 acres just to feed 30% of uh, Oakland with vegetable farming, with plants, with plant farming. If they wanted to add uh, meat and dairy and eggs and animal products, it would take 10,000 additional acres. It would take a total of 19,000 acres to have animal products. So people that are touting this local, eating locally, it needs to be plant-based. It's the only way it's gonna work. Uh, so, you know, and, and again, it means very little. Here's a, I'll wrap up the local with this uh, study that was done um, in the Journal of Environmental Science Technology. They found that switching just two meals a week from meat and dairy to a vegetable-based diet achieves more greenhouse gas reduction than buying all locally sourced food. So this local thing, it means very little. It's really the animal products that are, that are heavy on the um, environment. Grass-fed is another label that we're seeing a lot of now, not only grass-fed beef, but the sign that I, I snapped a picture of, uh, the sign in Whole Foods, and it's actually for grass-fed lamb. Uh, so we're seeing this a lot. 
I, interestingly, there are lots of studies coming out that are saying that it's not the environmental, you know, um, superstar that, that people think it is. Actually, grass-fed beef can produce 50 to 60 percent more greenhouse gases than conventional uh, meat. Uh, and it's a water waster, too, a lot more water wasted. So, you know, these labels, they mean very little, once again, ethically and environmentally. Uh, this is another um, interesting one. There's a couple of interesting things going on on this label that I really want to point out. So we've got 100% grass-fed beef, maple leaf, uh, dairy. So I went online to find out where maple leaf farms are. Maple leaf has over 35 farms in um, northern uh, um, um, New York, upper state New York, upper state New York. Has anyone ever lived, or is it, does anyone live in upper state New York or that area up there? Okay, is there grass year-round up there? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, no, there's not. And I actually learned through my research that some operations will have the cows inside all winter and they will truck cut grass from lower states up and feed them the cut grass in a confinement barn. I mean, it's ridiculous. So these labels, they mean so little. And the other thing I really want to point out here is that they have this cow's name. They have her name. She is, this is Buttercup. I don't know if you can see it, but right above her back, uh, her name is Buttercup. And so they're putting this, this face on uh, this cow, like, oh, look, Buttercup, and she's happy, and she's out in the grass. Do you think Buttercup is still alive right now? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, but Buttercup has long gone to slaughter. Uh, so, you know, the, the, it's just such a, um, a, a false narrative that they're spinning. Um, organic. So organic, of all these labels that, that we've been mentioning, organic is really the only one that has uh, a little, a, a, a more teeth as far as regulation. There's actually some on-site inspection. There's, you know, some bit of rigorous uh, um, uh, oversight, zero for all the other labels that we've been talking about. Uh, but even with organic, and when we're talking of both ethically and environmentally, there can be very little difference. So, okay, this is a great chart to kind of, kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So we've got three diets here. The, the green line going across is the impact on the environment, the, the global warming, you know, climate change impact. The three diets, top is vegan, middle is vegetarian with dairy and eggs, and the bottom is the standard American diet, what most people are on. So that bottom row, that bottom green, dark green line. So the dark green line is conventional farming. The, the light green line is organic. Okay, so starting at the bottom, that dark green line down there, that's the standard American diet. That's what most people are eating. Now let's say someone said, you know, I really want to be more ecological with my food choices. I want to be, eat more green. I'm going to go organic. I'm going to buy all organic meat and organic dairy. Okay, well, you help a bit. You jump up to that light green line up there, and you've reduced your impact by 8%. But let's say someone says, I want to eat more green. I really want to eat more ecologically. I'm going to go vegan. And not even talking organic anymore. Oh, wow. Okay, now you jump way up to that tiny little dark green line at the top, and you've reduced your impact by 87%. Amazing. So much more impactful, right? And of course, ultimately going to the top little tiny light green line, doing organic vegan, you've reduced your impact by 94%. Incredible, really impactful, yeah. So, um, so uh, just kind of wrapping up the environmental part. Organic can be good. Lo uh, organic local can be good, but really plant-based is best. Um, conventional plant foods cause far less environmental damage than organic local animal foods. And of course, ultimately, doing organic plant foods can be the very best. Okay, so, and I have so much more in my book. Uh, this is just kind of a, a really sh quick little wrap up of this, but I go in, in depth in my book. I have a, a huge section about the environmental impact and all these labels and what it means in my book. So, um, so now I want to switch over, switch gears to the language and labeling. So, first we're going to talk about the industry. And you know, I, I just wrote here there are inherent cruelties in all animal farming that cannot be avoided and are not diminished with a reassuring label. Uh, and of course, um, uh, Justin got into a lot of this, uh, but I'm just gonna kind of um, uh, uh, talk a little more in depth about it. 
so this is a picture of a slaughterhouse that is in my area, in Petaluma, up north of San Francisco. And it used to be called Rancho Veal. And Rancho is uh, a, a, just a kind of common name in the area. There's Rancho Vista, and Rancho This, and Rancho That. And it was called Rancho Veal. And uh, it, it, you know, it's been there for many, many, many years. It was kind of going defunct and um, unfortunately got bought by Marin Sun Farm, which is a you know, grass-fed, kind of sustainably farm happening in uh, Marin. And they painted on the side of the slaughterhouse, Mindful Meats. <laughs> Mindful Meats. And I mean, the day I saw this, I pulled over and just wanted to scream. <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's so offensive to me, personally, as a spiritual person, you know, we're, we're using the term mindful, this mindfulness is kind of coming into our ethos as Westerners bring over from the East, from uh, Eastern traditions, Buddhism, Hinduism, the, the, the feeling behind it is to be uh, more conscious of what we're doing, more yeah. careful, more aware of our relations, of our impacts, and to, to think that there is anything different going on inside this slaughterhouse, to think that there is more something more mindful happening, that they're more thoughtfully slaughtering the animal, it's ridiculous, and it's offensive. Uh, <laughs> they're spinning and that we have to call out. Um, the egg industry is, is all over this. Uh, now, so this is, uh, this is called Vital Farms, uh, Vital Farms Eggs, and they've got it going on. Oh my goodness, we got everything here. We've got happy hens, we've got pasture rays, we've got, and I was looking at this, this uh, uh, label going, my God, you know, they've got green grass and fresh air and sunshine, right? So I went on their website to kind of give a little more information about them. And uh, they have uh, over a hundred farms. I'm sure they know exactly what's going on on every single one of those farms, right? Uh, and, but they didn't say where they were. The only thing that I could find was a P.O. box in Texas. So I have no idea where they are. Um, but I cut this, I cut and pasted this uh, part. They have a lot of, of, of humane washing. So I, I, I used the term humane washing on the last slide, of course. You know, we know what eco-washing is. is uh, you know, uh, touting a, a product as being ecological when it's not, that's greenwashing, so now we've kind of adopted the term humane washing, meaning the same thing with ethics. Uh, and so I kind of, I pulled this from their website, and I thought this first part was interesting. I'm just gonna read the first whole part to you. It says, how can an egg be ethical? Think not of the egg, but of the process by which it came to be. Now, this to me, I think that's a little bit of a dig to veganism, right? No, it's not the egg that's a problem. Don't think about the egg being evil. There's a, it's the process, and there can be a good process. There can be a happy way to do it, right? That's kind of what they're saying. It's very subtle, but very interesting. Uh, so we've, yeah, it's, we've got this going on all over. <laughs> um, I, this could be a whole nother book, and actually, uh, we have someone here, Rock Perilla, is in the room, who has written one of the only other books on this subject called um, Farm the Fable, yes. And he talks a lot about this kind of thing in his book as well. Um, but I'm gonna switch gears, because I, in the last bit of time I have left, I really want to talk about our language as <coughs> activists, uh, because there's things that are, that, that are just kind of unconscious now um, that I think need to switch. Let me, let me uh, plead my case to you as to why that is. Okay, first of all, I want to start with asking you to um, please stop saying factory farming. But here's why, uh, for those that don't, uh, don't really you know, grasp it. So factory farming, it, it, it's a powerful term. It's done its job. It's incredibly visceral. You know, it really gets people thinking about, you know, that, that, that bad things are happening <laughs> in animal farming, right? Um, so it's done its job. It's been a, a really powerful, play, a powerful statement, a powerful phrase to get us where we are now. The problem is, is that now because of this humane 
uh, farming and humane lives that are coming to be, um, people are thinking that there is an alternative. Mm -hmm. And they're saying things like, oh, well, my meat's not factory farmed. I get it at Whole Foods. Yeah. Oh, my eggs aren't factory farmed. I get it at the farmer's market, right? So they're seeing that there's this alternative uh, thing going on that's not factory farming. I've even seen um, on websites, like there was a pork producer that said, oh, we're against factory farming, buy our pork. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is, is that factory farming is no longer necessarily a vegan term. Right. Okay? So we have to be careful with this. Um, so I, I, wrote, I wrote something about this, and I'm just going to read the quote, um, a, a little quote from my article that I wrote, the term factory farming was intended to end all animal farming, but there's been a shift in the last few years, a shift towards humane animal farming, in quotes, um, and now everyone, it seems, can get behind ending factory farming. Uh, the animal rights activists, as well as the consumers and the, the processors of meat, dairy, and eggs. Um, this is an unintended and dangerous common ground by where the rhetoric of the animal rights movement has been appropriated by our opposition to promote the very products that we seek to condemn. Yeah. Right? That's right. So now, when we're denouncing animal products uh, and, and with the term factory farming, we are ironically repeating, repeating the marketing slogan of an increasing sector of the animal product industry. So just really be careful with this language. Um, okay. Animal agriculture. Animal, animal, agriculture. animal agriculture or yeah. animal farming. All animal agriculture. All animal farming is bad. All farming of animals. Just including all. Yeah, not making a distinction. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so another thing uh, is, please, please, please stop saying, and I hear it all the time, I heard it yesterday from someone, 99% of our meat, dairy, and eggs is from factory farms. Or, and this one I heard recently, I was on a panel uh, with someone, um, a fellow activist, uh, at, a, at a veg fest who said, you know, whether it's from a small farm or a large farm, or whether they are from a small farm or a, a, a big factory farm, they all go to the same slaughterhouse. This is, this is kind of rhetoric that we have been repeating, right, just kind of unconsciously. Um, and I, I went online and, and typed in, just to Google Images, the 99% thing, and got tons of memes. This is just a meme that the, the animal agriculture, you know, the animal activists, sorry, vegans, are repeating <laughs> over and over. So what I want to know is what do vegans think and activists think is happening on these small 1% of farms, right? Do we think it's like this? <laughs> <laughs> that it's all butterflies and rainbows and everything's fine on that 1% of farms, right? No, absolutely not. Um, no, we, you know, we, all animal farming is factory farming. Um, if, if a chick is hatched into this world in a sterile metal drawer without the comfort of her mother or a soft nest, that is factory farming. Yeah. Okay. If we, you know a calf is ripped from his mother at birth and separated from her and the other cows, uh, frightened, alone, chained, unloved, that is factory farming. If an animal has her feet cut off, her tail cut off, her his genitals ripped out, that's factory farming. If an animal is hung upside down with his throat slit open, that is factory farming. All animal farming is factory farming, no matter the size. No. So we really have to retire, we gotta retire the, this old rhetoric. And we have to start now saying all animal farming is cruel. All animal farming, dot, 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 okay? Um, all right, so just wrapping up, uh, I will say <laughs> that um, I, I hope this, this weekend is an inspiration to you. It always is to me. I've been coming to uh, the Animal Rights Conference now um, every year since 2000, at least four. Uh, I was trying to think if I had come, I know I came in 2004, so I'll say that <laughs> as the start. And every year it's so inspirational to me. Uh, it really feels great to be, you know, all the vegans taking over a nice hotel and just like, oh, it's a vegan world, you know? Um, so I really hope that, you know, if you are not already vegan, please go vegan. Let this weekend be an inspiration to you. If you are vegan, uh, get active. 
There are dozens and dozens of organizations out here that need your energy, need your time, need your talents. Please get active. If you're already active, get more active. Uh, <laughs> the animals need you. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, 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 I've seen so much amazing progress. This, this conference is, a, is kind of an testament to that. It's grown so much. Uh, it's so exciting. So um, please let this weekend be an inspiration to you. Go back, energize, and do more. And I'll wrap up with this quote from my book. It is not our methods of animal agricultural practices that need to change. It is our unwillingness to let go of animal products and animal farming. Thank you. Jane Unchained live coming to you from the Animal Rights National Conference in Los Angeles, California. Signing off now, Paige Parsons Roach reporting live. <laughs>